So legendaries are a staple in Classic WoW. You can't think of iconic Classic WoW weapons without first thinking of Sulphurus and Thunder Fury. Atiesh is a little bit more low-key but also iconic. Despite it being a big status symbol to own one of these legendary weapons, how do they compare to other epic weapons that you can get in terms of stats? In this video, I will go over all three legendaries in Classic WoW and ask how good are they really? But before I get into it, just to let you guys know, I'm going to be hiring some video editors to help me make videos on this channel. So if you guys are interested in helping me make some Classic WoW videos, please drop me a message on Twitter at itsvolty. So with all that being said, let's get into the video. So starting off first is Sulphurous Hand of Ragnaros. Now to get this weapon is probably the easiest of the three. The hardest part is getting the 3% drop chance of the Eye of Sulfaris from Ragnaros, as well as a few thousand gold in blacksmith materials. So right away for phase 3, its stats are really nice as far as two-handed weapons go. It has 223 to 372 damage on a 3.7 speed, totaling in at 80.4 DPS, as well as 12 strength and stamina and plus 30 fire resistance. It also has a very nice proc of giving you a chance of hurling a fiery ball of 273 to 334 damage with a 75 damage over time on top of that. A very nice proc which definitely adds more to the weapon's DPS than what is shown on the DPS. The final stat it has is giving you 5 fire damage upon being hit, which to be honest isn't that good, but it's a nice little bonus. Now the main issue with Sulphurus is that it's a mace, and not a sword or an axe. You see, the way melee DPS talent trees are set up, the mace specialization talent for warriors gives you a 5% chance to stun for 3 seconds with each swing. Now that is amazing in PvP. However, this is useless in PvE encounters. Now, on the other hand, swords are much better for warriors. The reason for that being, the sword specialization talent gives you a 5% chance to gain an extra swing on your attacks, which is absolutely amazing for PvE. The sword specialization talent is just that good. Axes, on the other hand, are also a pretty good alternative. The axe specialization talent gives you a 5% chance to crit, which as you can imagine is also useful in PvE as well. The mace specialization talent, on the other hand, doesn't really help Help you in a raid. Now for this reason, Sulphurus is actually going to be stronger in the hands of a Retribution Paladin or a Shaman, and not so much a Warrior. The talents that Shamans and Paladins have synergize a lot better with two-handed maces. Now the closest comparison that we have to Sulphurus is Ashkandi, the epic two-handed sword that you can get from Nefarian. This two-handed sword has a 229 to 344 damage on a 3.5 attack speed, totaling in at 81.9 DPS, which is about 1.5 DPS more than Sulphurus, but on the other hand is a faster weapon. The bonus stats that it has is plus 33 stamina and plus 86 attack power. 86 attack power is huge, but it's questionable if it contributes more DPS than the proc that Sulphurus has. I would say Sulphurus does slightly more DPS than Ashkandi, but it's pretty close. Now if you're playing an Enhancement Shaman or a Retribution Paladin, the first real upgrade that you have from Sulphurus in my opinion is the Dark Edge of Insanity, and you can get that from Anchorage 40, which is in Phase 5. Now that's quite a while away, so until then the best option for two-handed weapons will be Sulphurus for Shamans and Paladins. So the next legendary is Thunder Fury. So this one-handed sword is just as iconic as Sulphurus and is really annoying to get. It requires two bindings, a left and a right binding from Gar and Baron Geddon, in addition to a bunch of gold. So it's very hard to get this in your guild. But how good is Thunder Fury really? So looking at Thunder Fury, there is a lot of interesting stats on this weapon. And the value of this weapon goes way beyond what its DPS initially shows. It has a 44 to 115 damage with a 1.9 attack speed, which is a fairly fast sword. But it also does a bonus plus 16 to 30 bonus nature damage, which is pretty unique. One of the few weapons that deal both physical and magical damage at the same time. It also gives you plus 5 agility, 8 stamina, 8 fire resistance, and 9 nature resistance. So some decent resistances to make MC, Blackwing Lair, and Anchorage slightly easier. The proc that this weapon has is when this weapon gets really wild. 
It has a chance on hit to deal 300 nature damage and an AoE effect of reducing nature damage to targets by 25. The main thing is that 300 nature damage. So to put things into perspective, this proc has about an 18% chance of proccing upon melee swings, which is a very high likelihood. That's 300 nature damage that it can inflict is really massive. It's basically like an 18% chance of gaining an extra swing and a half with your weapon. So the DPS that this weapon has is way higher than it shows. And this is the reason why rogues and warriors will fight tooth and nail to get this. However, the most underappreciated part of Thunder Fury is the part where it reduces the target's attack speed by 20% for 12 seconds. So on top of all that nature damage and the lowering of resistances, it applies a massive debuff to the target. That applies to bosses as well. So essentially, someone using this weapon will apply an almost constant debuff on the boss that they are fighting, which essentially reduces the boss's damage by 20% since they are attacking 20% slower. This is absolutely huge. That can be the difference between seeing your tank die or live. That reduced damage from a boss makes this weapon worth it just by itself. The difference between a guild that has Thunder Fury and a guild that does not have Thunder Fury is immense. Of course, other classes can use this like rogues and paladins, but for most cases, it will go to a tank. And there really is no replacement for Thunder Fury in Classic WoW, in particular for a tank, who really benefits from the bonus threat generated from this weapon's damage. The closest you can get to Thunder Fury as a tank is the Hungering Cold, which drops from Kel'Thuzad in Naxxramas when Phase 6 comes out. But even then, the Hungering Cold just has nice stats, it can't really compete with the proc that Thunder Fury has. This weapon is so good that it's actually used in the Burning Crusade, it's just that strong. Definitely well worthy of its legendary status and arguably the most impactful item in classic WoW raiding. So the last legendary to look at is Atiesh, which is the reward from a long questline involving getting materials from Nexramus and AQ40. Now the interesting thing with the stave is that there are actually four versions that you can get, depending on which class you are. The four versions are for a priest, a warlock, a mage, and a feral druid, all with their own unique stats. Now I'm sorry to say, but this staff will not go to a feral druid. I'm sorry guys, but it's just not going to happen unless you are the GM and you reserve it for yourself. So in reality, this staff is only going to be given out between a priest, a mage, and a warlock. All of these staves are ridiculously good, so let's begin with the mage staff. Now the mage version of Atiesh provides 32 intellect, 31 stamina, 24 spirit, plus 2% chance to hit with spells, 150 spell damage, and an aura that increases critical chance for spells of party members by 2%, kind of like a low-key boomkin aura. It can also be used to create a portal going to Karazhan of all places, which for classic WoW is pretty useless, but maybe in the Burning Crusade you could see some use for this. So these stats sound pretty good, right? Well, comparing it to phase 6 best and slot weapons and offhand combo, the best combination of a weapon and offhand that you can get is the Wraith Blade and Saffron's Eye. Now these two combined give you 16 intellect, 22 stamina, and 121 spell damage, with 2% hit and 2% crit. The stats that Atiesh has blows this out of the water. Atiesh gives you 16 more intellect, 9 more stamina, 24 more spirit, 29 more spell damage, as well as the 2% crit aura to everybody in your group. So yeah, this staff is legit as it gets. The Warlock version of Atiesh is a similar story, except it gives you an aura of 33 spell damage and healing instead of the 2% crit, which is a slightly better aura, however this version of Atiesh gives 2% crit instead of the major's 2% hit, with spell hit being more desirable for a caster DPS than critical strike chance. So it's really debatable as to whether or not the mage or the warlock Atiesh is better, I mean it could go either way to be honest. And the priest version of the stave is the best weapon that you can get as a holy priest as well, with a massive plus 300 healing as well as an aura that increases healing by 62 to everybody in your group. Once again, best in slot for a holy priest, so good luck deciding which caster to give this stave to. This is a more hotly contested item compared to any of the other legendaries that you can get, so expect some guild drama as to who to give this stave to. So the conclusion is, legendary items in Classic WoW are for the most part legendary. Probably the strongest weapon out of the lot being Thunder Fury, and the weakest being Sulphurus. 
which does see some upgrades in later phases, even if you are a shaman or a paladin. But Thunder Fury and Atiesh are the best possible weapons for what they do. Well guys, if you enjoyed this video, please drop a like down below as it helps me out a lot. This is Volti, signing out.